I feel absolutely terrible. For the past few days, I've been emailing a number of companies about Intel Alder Lake products, and one of them is MSI. And MSI said, we're gonna get you samples. However, we're working on a big press kit. So you might have to be a little bit patient. And I'm quoting from memory here. I said something to MSI along the lines of, I really honestly don't much care about the press kit. Please just get me the samples. I don't need all the fripperies and all the extras. And then this turned up. So I'd like to start this unboxing with an apology. MSI, I'm really sorry. You've done a bang up job. The contents of this box deserve love, care and attention. And that's exactly what they're gonna get. We start with a notice. Intel Kingston and MSI are ready to delight you with perfect media kit. Grand present the best performance combination with 12th generation Intel Core i9 processors, Kingston Fury Beast DDR5 5200MHz 16GB x 2, MSI Meg Z690 Unify, MSI Meg Core Liquid S360. So the sense is good, the language is a little mangled. Picture of products, and then we get to the good stuff. It's an MSI kit, let's start with the MSI motherboard. MSI Meg Z690 Unify. A very brief look. I'll be coming back to this. A non-RGB Z690 motherboard, PCI Express Gen 5, DDDR5 memory support. Then we have from Intel. And here we have a Core i9 12900K Intel Alder Lake processor. The big boy. Eight performance cores, eight efficiency cores, 24 threads. Kingston Fury DDR5 memory. So that's a 32 gigabyte kit rated at 5200 mega transfers, but we're gonna say megahertz because that's just how we roll at Kit Guru. Take out some of this packaging. We have a box MSI liquid cooling accessories and a core liquid S360 cooler. Ace Tech cooler, we use the S360 core liquid for our Intel 11th gen launch. And as you'd expect, it comes with LGA 1700 mounts, so it's compatible with Z690 boards. What about the liquid cooling accessory I mentioned in passing there? Two mysterious plates. Let's take the main part of the cooler out of its box. Remove this side plate, which is gunmetal gray. And I can replace it with, now I have to say it's a subtle change, but we're going from gunmetal gray to black. This is to give us full color compatibility with the Unify board, which is stealth matte black, no RGB undercover. So what about that Meg Z690 Unify motherboard? And for that matter, what about this Z690 carbon Wi-Fi board? Very good questions. I'm gonna quickly take you through MSI's presentation on their 600 series motherboards because there's a lot of good information laid out in a really concise manner. And there's also some very interesting nuggets that we haven't previously seen about Intel 12th gen Alder Lake. The basic facts we already know. The new platform supports PCI Express Gen 5 on the primary graphics slot, has up to 20 CPU lanes of PCI Express. DDR5 support, up to 4800 MHz mega transfers. Turbo boost of the fastest processor, up to 5.2 GHz. Uses LGA 1700. Hybrid architecture of performance and efficiency cores. This is the new Intel 7 process, which is 10 nanometer super thin. This table of feeds and speeds of the i9, i7, i5, k SKUs is interesting. It breaks down 
how many cores you get of both types. So we see here that both the Core i9 and Core i7 have eight performance cores. They have differing numbers of efficiency cores. Then with the Core i5, you step down to six performance cores and four efficiency cores. You can see memory support. The memory controller in Alder Lake supports both DDR4 and DDR5 and both the regular high power and the low power for mobile forms. The memory controller covers basically everything we're interested in, which means that motherboards can support either DDR4 or DDR5, and this is really useful when you have a new technology, because new memory technologies, generally speaking, aren't very good for half a year or so. In the first instance, DDR5 is not necessarily the go-to. DDR4 could be a really useful standby. Base frequencies of the processors and also max turbo frequencies, interesting to see laid out in charts. We already knew this. TDP 125 watts, we know this is just nonsensical. And we can see how the new 12th gen processors compare to the current 11th gen. We move on to MSI's own information about their motherboards and the naming rules, what the various parts of the names actually mean. Meg and Mag and Pro and so on and so forth. It's useful having this little chart just to break down what the heck these names mean. This slide tells us how to distinguish between DDR4 and DDR5. In essence, the native support is DDR5. If it has a suffix of DDR4, it's DDR4. If it doesn't say, it's DDR5. A chart breaking down that MEG, MPG and MAG are for the gamer and the creator boards are for creators. Well, okie dokie. This is interesting. The main upgrades from Z590 to Z690. Obviously, we've got support for DDR5, where previously had DDR4. VRMs, up to 20 phases of 90 amps with the existing generation, moves to up to 19 phases of 105 amps. The PCB, currently up to 10 layers, will move to up to 12 layers. Heat dissipation of M.2, so the godlike at the moment gets the really good stuff with the Z690. A huge number of boards get proper cooling for M.2s. This is really good to see. And with the existing generations up to three times M.2 generation four, moving to up to four times M.2 gen four. And then MSI puts some figures on what those changes actually mean. I note the extreme storage performance says at least four M.2s and ATXs with a maximum of five M.2 connectors. We'll see more about that later. PCI Express Gen 5 on the primary slot. At the moment, we can't check this out because there's no such thing as PCI Express Gen 5 hardware out there in the wild. It doubles, perform it doubles transfer speed compared to Gen 4. At the moment, we can't saturate Gen 4. So this is clearly looking to the future or more accurately to the next generation of graphics cards. Who knows, will it be Gen 4 or will they move to Gen 5? at least four M.2s. Just look at that board. Look at all the storage. Look at how one of those M.2s is Gen 3 rather than Gen 4. Nonetheless, Gen 3 is blooming fast and Gen 4 is blazing fast. So that's not gonna hold us back. MSI Gen 5 PCI Express card with active cooling. I wanna see this in action with the next generation of M.2 SSDs. Oh yes. DDR5 operating up to 66, 66 megahertz, or mega transfers if you're being pedantic. Until we try this, we can't comment on it, but by goodness, that's a huge number. We know the first gens of DDR5 have latencies in the 40, 40, 40 territory, so higher clock speeds are essential. Lower latencies combined with higher clock speeds will be a lifesaver. Memory support stand. Look at that. They've reinforced the memory slots to assist cooling. Up to 19 phases of power on the Meg Ace, the Meg Unify, and the Meg Unify X. I think we're starting to understand why we've been sent the Unify as the review model. Duet rail power system, i.e. two EPS connectors to power the CPU. Upgraded power design. This is really handy, a proper breakdown of the VRMs on a range of the new Z690 motherboards. And in particular, you can see how the new 
Ace Unify and such like compares to the previous 590. There is absolutely no doubt MSI is taking a step forward in this department, and I'm quite certain this will be true of all the other motherboard manufacturers as well. Up to 12 layers of 2 ounce copper, server grade PCB. Good news. We see M.2 cooling, M.2 shield frozer. Well, yep, this is good. Keeping your M.2s cool, particularly in the Gen 4, is absolutely essential. And we see an aluminium cover with an extended heatsink over the VRMs. Also essential. Choking the VRMs makes no sense. Working on the cooling for VRMs is a really good idea. And here's a detail showing the heat pipe design on MEG and MPG motherboards on the VRMs. The EK version of the Carbon 690, as you would expect, has a monoblock that covers all the important hardware. We'd expect the EK Carbon to come along in a month or two. It's unlikely it's going to be out in the very near future, but when it comes, no doubt it's going to be a stormer. Thunderbolt 4 ports and mini display inputs. This is the sort of thing that keeps my colleague Luke very happy indeed. However, it generally costs a small fortune. Lightning USB 20 gigabit, USB 3.2 Gen 2 times 2. We're going to see a huge number of USB C's on the new generation of motherboards. They're going to be rated at 20 gigabit or 10 gigabit, but blazing fast is the key message here. Intel 2.5 gigabit LAN, no surprise there. Wi Fi 6E. This is definitely going mainstream in the world of Wi Fi. Immersive RGB experience. Well, you knew it was going to be in there somewhere, didn't you? A handful of features to do with audio, the pre-installed IO shield, reinforcing the various expansion slots, and protection for electrostatic discharge. New DIY friendly designs, easy M.2 clip. This screw is something that I know for an absolute fact is being used by at least one other manufacturer, but it means you haven't got to fiddle around for the tiniest little screw to hold down your M.2 SSD. You simply put it in place and flip around a catch. Long overdue. I'm very pleased to see this. And then we move on to the motherboards. So the Meg 690 Ace, it's gold, as was the 590. Look at the features, dual Thunderbolt, 19 phase VRMs, very fast LAN and Wi-Fi, loads of M.2s. The Meg Ace continues to be a premium product. Then we have the Meg 690 Unify and Unify X, which are apparently assembled to accomplish any task with cruel efficiency. And that's what they sent me. Plenty of emphasis on the VRM cooling. 19 phases of VRMs, again we've got 2.5 gigabit and also Wi-Fi 6E, 5 M.2s, and we have Lightning USB 20 gigabit. In other words, it's very similar to the Meg Ace by the sound of it, but no gold, no RGB. MPG Z690 Carbon Wi-Fi. This has 18 phases of 75 amp VRMs, so it's a step down from the Unify, but nonetheless, it's still high end. And again, you get fast Wi Fi, fast Ethernet, 5 M.2s, USB 20 gigabit. Carbon EKX is exactly what we expect monoblock that covers all the important hardware. Moving down through the range, the MPG Z690 Force Wi Fi on paper looks amazingly similar to the Carbon Wi Fi. The MAG Z690 Tomahawk Wi Fi, 16 phases of 70 amp Dr. Mosses, decent connectivity, 4 M.2s, still has USB 20 gigabit. So nothing to be sneezed at. Mag Z690 Torpedo looks blooming similar to the Tomahawk, but it does not have Wi-Fi. That's the differentiator. Pro Z690A and Pro Z690A Wi-Fi. Now we have 14 phases of VRMs. We still have the USB 20 gigabit. We have 2.5 gigabit LAN. We have four M.2s. So we're stepping down very slightly on the power delivery. And MSI finishes up with a table showing the specs of their various models, which is always good to see because we know what the heck we're dealing with. This is a new range of motherboards. It's a new generation of Intel processor. We've got a load of kit from MSI, including DDR5, the processor, and also a liquid cooler. So I'm all set for the launch day. Once I've done just a little bit of testing. <laughs> <laughs>